What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Pixelogic Zebra stream. I am Foligon, and we will get started here in just one moment. Once I make sure that we have the chat and stream going up. It's actually really dark in here. One second. Let me turn on an extra light. All right. And if you can hear me all right, shout out something in the chat. And it looks like we are good to go. Cool. Well, ba -ba -ba -ba. my chat's being a little weird. I think we're good. All right. And one last thing. All right, cool. All right, so tonight we are going to be doing some, uh, some fun things in ZBrush. And by fun things, I mean sculpting food friends. <laughs> so I want to try to sculpt like two or three simple quick characters that you guys can maybe follow along with. And uh, yeah, I had an idea for, let's see, a, I found this dude. We'll probably do this guy last if we do, if we do this hamburger dude. But uh, I found just a quick slice of pizza. I was like, ooh, this looks like a fun slice of pizza. Let's sculpt that. And let's turn it into some kind of like drippy melty character that looks very sad. And I was thinking of doing some kind of fun little food waffle boy laying down on his back and he's like a helping out falling and I can't get up kind of waffle boy. It'll be great. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> All right. So just some kind of Z Russian and chill kind of night here tonight. We've been doing lots of stuff over on my stream. Hello, Maroon. How are you doing? John Clark and Tarek. How are you guys doing? So the last uh, few times I think we jumped on stream here, uh, I was already in the middle of something. So tonight we'll be doing it right from the get-go, right from start. We got a fresh scene here in ZBrush. And uh, one thing I actually really quick just want to pull up for those that have uh, those that don't follow me that did not get to see Android 17 finished. Uh, let me find the render file really quick. And I'll pull up the image. So I ended up finishing my Android 17 character. If you guys didn't uh, end up seeing him, there's he. There he is. And this guy was rendered in Blender, actually. Um... So yeah, you know, pretty simple render scene, just like a three point lighting setup. It'll take five seconds to show off. And yeah, three point lighting setup. If you guys aren't familiar with, I just tried setting this up for the first time. I'm not sure why my zoom is not working, but yeah, you can check out some more images in terms of this guy over on, uh, over on my art station. It's just art station slash polygon. I think this is gonna take too long to pull up. So I'm actually just gonna close it and you guys can go check it out if you want to see some more uh, render uh, render views and everything. But we can go ahead and get started now that we got a few more people in here. And I will find my images of my food again. So like I said, pretty chill night if you guys want to follow along. I think these will be really fun and easy to, easy to do. And we can maybe learn some new tools. And I'm here to answer questions as well. So let's grab our few images. I'm going to be importing some images into the Spotlight tool in ZBrush, if you guys are familiar with that. If not, it's very simple. All you have to do is go into your texture menu and import an image and then click on the Add to Spotlight button. After you do that, you get this like little hockey puck icon here that you can move around your images with. I'm going to grab the pizza slice because I think we should do the pizza first. I think that'll be fun. And we'll do tile selected. And just slide all these images off screen, except for my pizza. And I will scale my pizza and just put them right there and turn up my opacity. If you guys are going to be using the spotlight tool for uh, reference images in ZBrush, there is one thing that you have to do. You have to turn off a thing called spotlight projection, which is in your brush palette under, I believe under auto samples, I think, or under samples, spotlight projection. Just make sure you uncheck that or else uh, ZBrush will think that you're trying to use this image as a stencil for projecting color and uh, texture. Francisco, welcome back, man. How you doing? And Doug, 
uh, Bombi, I was gonna say Bambi. Welcome guys, how you guys doing? Hello, Michael Pavlovich, so the stream title reads incorrectly. Oh no, that's not a problem. Hi guys, I am uh, Michael Pavlovich and I will be showing you all sorts of awesome, cool tutorials very quickly. That's what Michael likes to do. <laughs> Getting hungry from cartoon pizza? Come on. Um, Jehanis and Arochima, welcome guys. My Facebook chat isn't connecting, so if there's some people over on Facebook, I will check it from time to time for questions. Oh, it doesn't look like it's loading. All right. Real quick, <laughs> just to make sure that we got the Facebook uh, stream loading up. Let me sh send out a quick message here. loading for me huh all right well I sent a quick message to Kyle so hopefully we can get that worked out but I think we can just go ahead and get started here and uh, yeah Facebook will catch up uh, I am NOT Michael Pavlovich by the way my name is Ben or you can call me Folygon either one works and we are gonna be sculpting some food fun critters of some sort so uh, if you want to follow along, cool. I'll try to describe as much as I can, as best as I can. And if I go too fast on any of the steps, just yell at me, say, bad folly, and uh, I'll slow down and try to explain things a little bit better. Let's just start with um, a one by one by one cube, just a pure six-sided cube here. It's down in your initialized palette, really easy to do. Just do a one, one, one cube. And yeah. Now we're gonna make a triangle. I know, the craziest, most difficult shape to make in 3D. A triangle, God forbid. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to kind of pull out the shape here. Amazing, I know this is really high-end 3D modeling stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm just gonna use my transpose brush to do all this real quick. And voila, we've got a very quick triangle. Pressing the D key will add a dynamic subdiv to that but we're probably gonna want to use our Z modeler brush and crease up a few edges to um, retain some of these hard transitions so let's look at doing that real quick probably get just about actually every edge here actually I'm gonna wait to do the creases what I would like to do is I'm gonna do the base of the pizza as a separate subtool. I'll do the crust separately the cheese and the pepperoni and then we can put like some derpy face on it that's like uh, what's his name from DC? Is it Clayface? Is Clayface who I'm thinking of? He's got like the melty face. Uh, Kill Creations, welcome to the stream. Uh, Nicole, Pablanda, how you doing, Pabs? And Daniel, how you guys doing? Uh, finally get to watch one of your streams. Looking forward to see what you do with that slice. I know. It's gonna be a delicious slice. <laughs> Make his face droop. Of course, of course, that's the whole plan. Once we do a, a, a cute little derpy face on here. People call you Bambi often. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you guys wanna follow along, like I said, we're just gonna be duplicating our sub tool. And uh, because I like to be lazy, uh, we're gonna add a slice through here with this slice curve brush because who doesn't love to just cheat in ZBrush? And uh, Z Modeler by default will have that Q mesh operation for you, and you can just Q mesh it right out. And now we got the beginnings of where our crust will go. Uh, I'm doing this as a separate subtool just because I like to split things up and keep them separated. Just like that. And maybe we can add in another edge loop through here. With the Z Modeler brush, you can insert an edge loop. It is holding space over a poly, uh, insert poly loop along the full poly loop and that'll uh, apply through there. I was actually just going to say, oh, we're good. Okay, I thought ZBrush crashed. Um, adding poly loops across the X axis with X symmetry on is a no-no. It often uh, causes ZBrush to crash. 
Uh, so very quickly, we'll just kind of push and pull some verts around. I can actually do this with my move brush because we only have a couple verts here. So we'll just, whoop, let's turn X-Symmetry back on, that's my bad. We'll just kind of move this, round it back out and apply our creases in the correct area. Okay, all right. Well, we will retry that, our little slice of pizza. Uh, that's unfortunate. I'm guessing that uh, when I went to click that crease on the edge loop, it went to go put a poly loop on the other side. That is like a perfect example of me talking about something that could possibly crash ZBrush and then seeing it five seconds later. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Uh, luckily though, oh, we didn't. We didn't get the quick save. <laughs> luckily though, our uh, geometry was Pretty simple. So very quickly, I will get back to where we were. And by now, everybody should be here. Everybody who's anybody. All the cool kids, at least. So we can get back to where we were and get back to our pizza making. All right, Q cube. Very simple shape. Stretch that back out. Give us some pizza. Go for the triangle shape. Maybe we can reuse some of the same jokes that I made before. Hey guys, it's the hardest shape to make in 3D. Something, something. Redo our crust, and look at that. We're already back to where we were. Whoops. Slice, Z, or Z modeler Q mesh, voila. Just like that. So uh, you can insert poly loops with uh, the Z modeler brush, but I like using the slice curve brush on occasion, just because it's like a kind of a cheap way of doing it really quick and you can do it at any angle anywhere you want it really quick so a little bit of a little bit of a zbrush hack for you all right so let's redo our crust and i guess we can re-import our uh, pizza image that we were looking at real fast here so texture that's up here we'll go through this menu this time so you guys can see what's going on import find your slice of pizza or whatever you got going on and then uh, select your image and click on Add to Spotlight. And then Lightbox likes to open up when you do that. And then we can just scale and put this back where we have it. And Spotlight Projection's off for us. All right, we are back, just like that. I know, amazing. You guys are blown away by my, my speed modeling skills. Um, I'm not Michael Pav, that's correct. Yes, the title seems to be messed up. I tried to grab Kyle's attention, but I think uh, he might be gone for the day. What am I gonna tech you today? What am I gonna tech you, Pradeep? I am not teching anything, all right? But uh, I'm here to answer some questions, chill out, do some ZBrushing, make some droopy-faced pizza. Crash ZBrush a few times, and uh, yeah, I think we'll have a good time. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got the start of our pizza slice here. We got our crust back there. There's probably some proportional changes that we could make very quickly that wouldn't be that hard. I am using the transpose tool, and I'm using move, and I'm grabbing that last little circle, and it's allowing me to skew my shape. So that's how I am moving that in like that, just so you're aware. I know a lot of people that are kind of newer to ZBrush uh, that kind of got in after the curve of the transpose tool, the transpose line here, uh, don't know how to use uh, too many of the functions with it. So I'll try to describe a couple of the, the secret functions that I like to use on occasion. But yeah, let's continue on here. We got our pizza slice. I say we make our pizza slice a little bit longer proportionally to what we got going on there in our reference image and maybe kind of just make that fit a little bit better. Uh, we'll probably have to make our crust taller, but let's go ahead and get some cheese on here. Start getting that melty cheese going. This should be pretty simple. Uh, there are a number of ways we could do this. Uh, we could also make this a little bit um, uh, tighter towards the end. I think it's fine for now. We'll kind of look at that here in a moment. But to do this cheese, let's just duplicate our triangle of geometry. Pretty simple, right? And just kind of slide it up. And after we slide it up, what I'm going to do is add some subdivision levels to this so that I can sculpt on it. If 
but when you subdivide anything in ZBrush, it actually, uh, how, how can I describe it? I guess it smooths it is the easiest way to describe it. If you've ever used a smooth brush before, right? If you come over here on something that's low poly, it's gonna pretty much shrink and destroy that entire form. So what we wanna do is turn off the smooth modifier down here, and then we can add in some subdivision levels without worrying about that shrinking in and disappearing on itself. So now we can sculpt on this just fine, but let's get some more subdivs in here. We wanna be able to make some melty cheese, right? There we go. All right, so from here, what do we wanna do? Probably turn off X symmetry, grab our snake hook brush, and just pull down on some areas where we can get this cheese kinda melting off of here. Snake hook brush is awesome for uh, using just as a move brush, if you want a really powerful move brush. Some people like to use it with a really large area of effect. I prefer just using the move brush most of the time, but for like little pull out areas like this, it works really, really well. Um, so I'm just kind of looking at the reference there, grabbing a few of these pull out areas, this drippy cheese, kind of like tapering it in around that middle section. And we're starting to stretch the polygons really thin right now. That's totally okay. We just want to focus on getting the shape first and then we'll worry about the cleanup afterwards. It's important when blocking shapes out that you kind of just think about the big picture and try not to worry about the details. Even when you're, you know, modeling some simple, silly little pizza. All right, so a couple more over here and then we can do that on the other side as well. Uh, greetings from Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome, well, uh, Alexander, Alexander. I feel like the name Alexander can be spelled just like a million different ways. That's a very interesting way to spell, uh, spell it. I saw it uh, in, um, in Russian the other day, I think. I think it was Russian. I can't remember, but uh, it's just like a very interesting name with a lot of variation. Yeah, let's get some more cheese in here, Alexander. And then we can show how we can round out some of these forms here. We don't need to do all these so uniform though. We can, you know, do one and then like another next to it. Again, this is the snake hook brush. And then uh, from here, let's make sure our smooth, oops, where is it? Smooth subdivide modifier is on again. So now what we're going to do is just to redistribute our polygons so this is a little bit easier to work on. You might wanna come through with like a clay tubes brush or something just to start breaking up the surface a little bit. Maybe like a clay buildup, start to get some of that, you know, um, variation in the surface of your cheese, your melty cheese. Um, but we can do that after we're, we do the next operation, which is going to be Dynamesh. Uh, by default, the resolution is gonna be pretty low at, uh, at this scale by 128. So let's just bump that up. That looks pretty good. I just kind of clicked and it randomly landed on 400. I think that's fine for now. And what I wanna do now is just kinda very lightly smooth over some of this area. And instead of using the normal smooth brush, I am using the alternative smooth function. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you just start smoothing like you normally would. Let go of the shift key and keep smoothing. And it does a little bit more of an averaging of the surface. Uh, it's a little bit um, less destructive, I would say. And hello from North California. Well, uh, welcome, Morgan. Morgan Designs. How are you doing, Morgan? That is the Russian spelling. Very nice. Uh, gave you a Russian and American name because they weren't sure who would win the Cold War. <laughs> Very nice. Well, welcome, Alexander. Appreciate that you're here, man. And Nicolay. Nicola. How you guys doing? All right, so we've smoothed out our pizza cheese. Um, one thing that we can do is come through with an inflate brush. Remember how these were, you know, trying to taper some of those towards the end. We can maybe get a little bit more drippy down there with some inflate. I don't use the inflate brush too often in my own work, to be honest. Normally what I use is a move brush with uh, what's called back face masking. And I can show that to you really quick here after I straighten out some of our cheese. Having some trouble rotating around my cheese. 
Perspective often messes with my ability to rotate around an object very closely. I'm not sure why that is, I think just because I end up clicking on something really far away and it like, my camera starts to spin around all crazy and I get all confused and my brain hurts. And so I just avoid that and turn off perspective if I'm really zoomed in here close, specifically on pizza cheese or anything else that I'm modeling. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's keep messing with our cheese, keep pulling around here. Maybe get a, a little bit more just quick additional form here. Try to just get some extra lumpiness in our surface. And then I'm gonna run down here in tool, deformation, inflate. And I'm just gonna pull on that slider a little bit, inflate up, dynamesh again, beautiful. We got some beautiful cheese shaping up. I could just eat this up. All right. Uh, the move back face masking brush, which I wanna show you guys next, which I mentioned. Uh, grab your move brush, head on over into the brush menu and under auto masking, if I can see properly here, all the way right here, back face masking. Essentially what this allows you to do, you can turn this on uh, for any brush and it will only affect the geometry on the side of the stroke that you're making. So for instance, if I push this to the left with my move brush, it will only affect the geometry on that left side that I'm pushing towards. So what that means is I can just grab this and kind of inflate around certain areas manually, which is pretty nice. I use the move back face masking modifier on a, a number of different objects that I'm working on. It just kind of depends on the situation, but it's very useful and I'd highly encourage people to uh, check it out and use it some more. I, uh, I keep it in my quick pop-up menu here so that I can toggle it on and off when I'm using it and when I'm not. Uh, most of the time I turn it on, do a bunch of sculpting, and then forget I have it on, and then come back and I'm like, what's wrong with my move brush? Everything's broken. Uh, yeah, yeah. As, as most things are, it's just an operator error. All right, I think from here, we can probably stand to, um, yeah, I think so. Let's just go ahead and hit Z Remesh down here. I'm gonna lower this poly count down to one, 1,000. Uh, that might be a little bit too low just because of all the pulled out pieces here, but what we're essentially going to do with uh, Z Remesher is use Z Remesher and how it simplifies the form, lowers the poly count. We're gonna use that to our advantage to create uh, something that's a little bit more clean. Let's check out if this is a high enough resolution here in just a moment. Uh, so that looks pretty low poly, but after a couple subdivs, we can see that that smooths out pretty well. Surface on top is looking a little, I don't know, let's see. You know what, let's stick with that for now. I think that's a, a pretty good texture, and we can adjust that as we continue moving forward. Um, what else? What else we want to add here? We want to add some pepperonis, of course, and we also want to get some of the more uh, gestural shapes that are apparent in the crust. We got like a little bit of a crescent up there, and I think we can get some droop in the pizza as well. Um, so let's do that now. Let's droop it up. First thing I'm gonna do on this crust piece of geometry, I'm just gonna run a mirror and weld function. That's down here in modify topology mirror and weld. It's kind of a quick way of adding a uh, edge loop to the middle of any piece of geometry. That's mirrored across the x-axis, of course. Uh, and then, because it creased that for some reason, it's probably too close to that creased edge. Not a worry. I will just grab that middle edge loop and slide it on up. And just like that, we got some nice crust going for us. And we can maybe stick that out a little bit more, sure. We can combine those two if we want as well. I'll just leave that like that for now. And then the thing that I want to show you guys, uh, let's make sure we have enough polygons on this so that we can actually bend it and get this to deform properly. Let's go into Transpose Master very quickly. Ooh, you know what? Actually, that won't work. Here, what I'm gonna do, temporarily, 
is merge my crust and my pizza cheese together. And then what I'm going to do is select my 3D gizmo tool. I'm going to center this by holding alt and maybe not. Oh, I guess you don't have to hold all. What's going on? There's no way that's the center of the geometry. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna center that. Uh, normally you would hold Alt and click the Home button, but I guess that's saying that that is the middle of the geometry there. Totally fine. Uh, I'm gonna click on the gear, select the, uh, sorry, the Bend Curve Deformer but we're gonna have to freeze or delete our subdivisions temporarily to do that. One second here while we catch up on chat, because I see a few things sliding by that I'm missing. Ezra, <clears throat> oh boy, that went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> Ezra, welcome, welcome from Texas. Uh, Dusty, Jamie, how you guys doing? Uh, your stream says it's Michael Pavlovich live streaming. I, I am aware, yes, I am not Michael Pavlovich, if you guys don't know uh, who Michael is. Uh, my name is Ben, or Polygon. Um, that's what your stream says as well. Yes, I believe it just wasn't updated. Not a big deal. <laughs> Pavlovich is dead. Long live Polygon. Pavlo my <laughs> Mike Pav is not dead. Uh, Mike Pav is, is alive and well. Uh, nice to meet you, Neo. How you doing? All right, so we are gonna delete our lower subdivision levels. We're gonna click on this gear icon and select the curve, the bend curve, no, the bend curve. Uh, next, we're gonna play around with these little cones up here. Let's see, we want the red and the on that. bit too many uh too many polygons for for a bend curve deform and I we're the um z axis that should be currently it's by default on the x axis unfortunately that I like to play around with, uh, the bend curve deformer. Uh, if this doesn't work, there's another way to do this, and it's actually a little bit easier, but you don't get quite the clean results that you get from something like this. Um, but that's all right. We'll play around with it. Give it a second to catch back up. How do you center the gizmo tool again? You uh, hold Alt and then click on the home uh, house-shaped button. Uh, or if you're using the transpose tool, you can click on the white uh, hollow circle that's at the end of it. So this uh, is being a little laggy, so we're going to click on delete the deformer. Yes, delete the deformer. Click on that house icon and hold alt while you do it. Um, so instead, because that worked so very well, We'll just very quickly reconstruct some subdivs. Should take two seconds. And now we can actually just deform this ourselves. We don't need a bend curve deformer, right? We can just mask this shape off and do it ourselves. Or you know what, even better, just grab a giant move brush, which I love playing around with. And just tug and pull on some shapes here and just like that, get a little bit more simple shape or a little bit more of a curve. Uh, let's just kind of pull down here. It looks like that crust underneath is wanting to stay um, hard, surfaced. It's not really wanting to smooth out, but that's really easy to fix, so that's okay. And we have a hole in our cheese, oh no. That's okay, that's also very, very easy to fix. All right, we're just gonna rotate that down, make it look a little bit more drippy. Maybe like somebody's holding it. I just want it to be kind of framed a little bit better here.
Uh, would it be possible uh, to show how you delete geometry HD subdivisions? I added some by accident and don't know how to get rid of them. Uh, if you turn off geometry HD, I, I think you should be good, uh, but I don't really play around with the HD subdivs, so uh, uh, I will I will for forego uh, pulling that up. You can you can do that as well, but that's not actually the, the look that I was going for. So as long as you have move selected here and you uh, you have to, hol you have to um, hold alt, I think you have to click and then hold alt, we're on, there we go. If you hold alt and then click here on this middle circle, you can do a kind of a bend curve deformer as well. But what you can't do is you can't adjust the points one point at a time and then uh, click and like drag and pull down the, the like tip or back or anything like that. But that is a quick way if you guys want to get a, uh, a bend in something a little bit quicker. Uh, instead, what you can do is make your transpose line a little bit longer, and then the area of effect will be uh, a little bit larger here. There's a bunch of secret little tools like that in the transpose line. Uh, if you are using the move function again, and you right click on this end circle, you can actually use it to inflate your geometry or deflate it. Pretty cool. That's fun. <laughs> you can also uh, clip stuff really, really easily this way. But this is a clip. This is not a slice. So it just kind of smushes the geometry. It's the same interaction that you get from a clip brush. Uh, there are a couple others, but let's just kind of continue on here forward with our pizzeroni. Um, our crust. Our crust got all, our, all jank down here. I'm not sure why he wasn't wanting to deform quite as well as our cheese, but that's okay. We will fix. We will fix our crust. So I'll just kind of move it up in there. Uh, the way I quickly mask that, you can do this with your transpose line or your 3D gizmo. Just activate it and control click on the mesh that you want to work on. If you have two separate pieces of geometry in one subtool, very simple, very easy, and nice and quick. All right. So we got our cheese. We got our crust. We got some pepperonis up next, I think. So for the pepperonis, what I want to do is um, actually, I think a cool thing that we could look at would be making a custom pepperoni brush. And this isn't necessary, but I think it'll be fun. And mm, you know what? The surface isn't deformed enough. What I was wanting to do was create a brush that would uh, conform to the surface no matter what it was. Uh, you can use some matchmaking to do that. But instead, I think we can just very easily uh, let's just duplicate another piece of geo and use the IMM primitive brush to insert some cylinders. Uh, we'll also turn off our uh, symmetry. We'll just insert one and whoops. If I can select the vert I want, there we go. With the move option selected, I like to use the transpose tool a lot. Holding shift, you can kind of scale and squish that in. Easy as peasy. Easy peasy. Uh, these are already creased for the edges. It's just a custom cylinder. It's really easy to create and add that to the brush. If you guys have any questions about that, I can show you how to do that. And I'll just move it around on the low res settings here. And then we can, you know, play around with duplicating this around and going from there. Uh, if you have something without subdivision levels, a really quick and easy way to duplicate some objects that's really nice is you can grab your transpose tool or 3D gizmo, hold the control key and just click and drag an object and you can do that as many times as you want. Uh, we'll just click and drag one pepperoni out and we'll make some of these some different sizes and placement and then we can put a derpy face on this pizza and move on to our next foodie as long as nobody has any questions before we move on. This live stream made me hungry. That was the whole point. That was the whole point. I knew. Well, I just ate. So I was like, okay. Everybody always talks about food on my streams and makes me hungry. Time to get some revenge. <laughs> uh, we can also, you know, like I said, do some scale changes to these, make them a little bit uh, uh, more varied, uh, play with them however we want. I don't think we need to take them too far. Uh, let's do a few more. Let me just do this real quick and make sure I didn't miss anything in chat while I'm pepping, pepping my pizza. Um, would it be possible? Nope, I already read that one. 
uh, is it possible to change navigation to alt click like in other 3D applications? Um, you know what? Uh, there might be some custom hotkeys you can set up to do something like that, but uh, I would recommend getting uh, just getting used to the UI. I, you know, it might be a little annoying at first, but I think I think moving around in ZBrush is a lot more intuitive now than obviously when I started. Uh, I think you'll experience the same. I think everybody kind of has some growing pains in the beginning stages of ZBrush. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There might be some custom hotkeys you can set up. Uh, in terms of like tips that you can do, uh, you don't have to click on the canvas to rotate around or do any of the zooming and panning and all that stuff. What you can do instead is use right click. And what the benefit of right click is, is that you can do it over top of your geometry. So you know how you have to click on your canvas to rotate, but if you wanted to click and rotate here, you can't, but you can do that with right click. So you can be zoomed in really close and still be able to rotate and zoom back out and everything else without worrying about that. Uh, since you're maybe a little bit newer, I would recommend trying to get used to that now because I, I have some people that I know that um, are so used to the right click or um, left click, sorry, left click navigation on the canvas that there's no way that they could change and get used to it and, and swap. Stuck in there, stuck in their old ways, they are. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I would recommend for you. All right, we'll do a couple more peps. See if there's any more questions. Good night from Spain, Mr. Mustache88. Welcome. How you doing? How's Spain? Rain in Spain falls gently on the train and plane and automobile. All right, one more quick pep and we'll do a derpy face. What do you guys think we should do next? Derpy hamburger or what was the other one? A derpy waffle, derpy waffle character. I feel like the texture on a waffle would be pretty interesting to figure out. And I actually have some good ideas for some live Boolean tips that we can look at. Now that you got all your pepperoni on your pizza, though, uh, you probably did that a lot faster than me since I was talking, if you're following along. But what you want to do is come down into your polygroups menu and run an auto groups. Uh, this will give everything its own individual polygroup. And then from there, you can just click and select one at a time by control clicking with your transpose line, or you can turn on Auto groups masking, which is in, um, I believe it's under brush auto masking, much like back face masking was. Uh, I like to just kind of work on them individually and mask off what I don't want to affect and work on. Uh, other than that, what do you guys think? Derpy FaceTime melting on our cheese. Where's this face going to go? I feel like we could have made the face out of pepperoni now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That's okay. Instead, let's uh, let's turn this into like some kind of quick derpy character. Uh, also, I'll just sample some colors from this image up here. You can sample any color in the ZBrush program, uh, not just the UI, but the ZBrush program by hitting the C key. So I can sample this red on my button. I can also hit Z to bring up this hockey puck icon so that I can sample Im uh, colors from my imported image. So I'll just use a uh, quick painting material here and fill in some colors for my cheese and pepperoni and my crust and let's see my other crust and just like that we got some colorful beautiful pizza right here in ZBrush <laughs> all right um derpy face time oh accidentally did some quick paint there it's okay All right, how do we want to do this derpy face? I'm thinking, I'm just gonna insert some quick eyes. We'll make them black. And what we could do, we could make each one of these pepperonis. Ooh. Let's go into brush. And we want, I believe, depth. 
I'm going to bring that down to about zero. So now when I insert these, it'll be down inside in the middle of that. Uh, we can also draw these out and hold the control key uh, while you're drawing it out. And that will always make your inserted object the same size. So what I'll do is set my brush size to four and then click and draw these out and then give it some quick derpy eyes. And then if we want to make a mouth out of these this pepperoni, we can make one for each one. I, I think I think we'll avoid doing it on the pepperonis. Instead, let's, uh, where should we put this derpy face, guys? Where do we want this? Derpy waffle? I, I'm thinking I'm thinking the waffle as well. Uh, Gog, Gognov, Goginov, oh my gosh, there's no way, there's no way I can pronounce that one. Uh, welcome, welcome Goganov. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's grab our eyes real quick here. I'll just control click and drag them much like I did with the, um, pepperonis. And I inserted those directly on top of the pepperonis, so I'll run a delete hidden operation. The way you do that is control shift click your object so that you only select that one. And then under modified topology, click on delete hidden. All right. And maybe we could do some an anchovy smile. I think not. I say we just quickly carve this out of our, uh, out of our cheese here. Can maybe even use lazy mouse because we've been pretty lazy with our our creation already oh, he's a sad pizza slice do we want him to be sad these are, these are the kinds of questions that keep me up late at night he does look very very happy now though all right i say we move on to uh doing a quick quick little waffle character of some kind uh that's like falling over uh, if we wanted to, we could use something like the snake hook brush. I was thinking if you wanted to like turn these little cheese drippings into, whoa, let's turn off RGB with that. If you wanted to turn these like little cheeses, little cheese drippings into some arms. I mean, this guy is looking fantastic. I mean, this is probably, screw that Android 17 sculpt I did. <laughs> this is the best character I've ever created, guys. I'm just going to leave it just like that, stretching geometry and all. All right. Let's move on and uh, make a waffle now. I'll just do a quick save. Uh, let's also import our image of our waffle real quick. This delicious looking waffle. This is like picture perfect waffle. If you've ever been to a restaurant where they have menus uh, up in front of you on those like high res IPS displays and all the food looks so amazing. It's like, it looks like this. And then you get it and the waffle the waffle just looks like like 10% of that waffle. Like nowhere near as good. The pictures, the pictures always lie. All right, let's swap on over to a, I'm not, it doesn't really matter what object we start with because I'm just going to initialize it. Uh, we do want to make it a poly mesh 3D though, and then come down into initialize and set your settings to two, one, and two, and click on cylinder Y. Oh, some, someone's puppies outside. Then after you've created your cylinder, go down in the crease menu. And as long as your C tolerance is on 45, which is the default, just click on crease. And now when you subdivide this, it will crease in the way that we, uh, we would like it to for our waffles. All right, let's scale this down or squish it down. Maybe scale it up a little bit. So it's a little bit larger in the, whoops, a little bit larger in the ZBrush scene. I'm looking at my scale settings here. ZBrush likes everything to be right around two units cubed. So we'll play nice and, uh, and do that. So this pattern up here is fairly complex. Um, we could definitely Z model that, we could poly model that. But instead of doing that, I think it would be more interesting to, um, to do something with, let's see, one, two, three, four, to do something with live Boolean. I think that'll be cooler. Uh, but first, let's get like this little pulled out area there. So I'm gonna use my Z modeler brush, insert a poly loop, poly loop, and as long as X symmetry is not on, we shouldn't have any problems. 
And then we can probably scale that edge loop complete. Pull that out a little bit. Let's pull it out a little bit further. And then what I'm going to do is it looks like, from what I'm seeing, this is not going to be photorealistic. This is gonna be as derpy as our cheese, our cheese man here, which got a little out of hand there at the end, but that's okay, I like him. He's, he's perfect the way he is. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is bevel this edge loop just a little bit, and then those two edge loops that we have now, I'm going to crease, just to get a little bit of a different uh, shape to that edge, and then, I'm gonna run an extrude around that poly loop. And I think, let's just try beveling these two edges here. I think that's fine, but what I would like to do is kind of squish that, make it a little bit tighter for that middle section. I'm gonna make our waffle quite a bit smaller. I feel like we're using a lot of real estate for our waffle image. Uh, I'll just scale that back out for the edges there. All right, so something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can delete a lot of this. We can smooth it out later. We can play with it as we go. Uh, from here, let's create that interesting uh, texture or pattern that we have on top. Peter, what's going on, man? How you doing? As well as Desti. Desti, are you laughing at my pizza friend? I mean, spent spent days on this. <laughs> All right. So what we want to do first uh, is probably make our waffle just a little bit fatter, so we got more room to work with. Uh, and then looking at the top, I say we create this kind of large cutout section first and then create the, uh, the square um, push-in divots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so the way we're going to do that, we're going to be using live booleans. If you've never played around with live booleans, they are a ton of fun. I love me some live booleans. Let's start by inserting with our IMM primitive brush. You can insert a mesh, you can append a mesh, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna insert a cube right in the middle and voila, we have a beautiful cube. We will hide all the geometry except for the cube and delete everything that we don't want. And then we will stretch out this shape till it is the correct proportions for that cutout shape that we want. And then we're gonna turn on this negative icon here. So it's right next to this. You just click on that and turn on live Boolean. And when you slide that object down, it did disappear. It's still there. If you turn on polyframe now, you can see it. If you slide that down, it will start cutting into that shape. Ooh, pretty neat, huh? So what we're gonna do now is make sure that that is mirrored. And I am going to Use this to figure out some thickness here. Let's say about like that, sure. We'll just kind of slide it down. And then to add some more complexity to this shape, let's just grab this bottom vertice here, pull down. Whoops. We're going to have to um, crease some edges here just so we get a little bit of a better shape. Crease, edge loop complete. Or actually, let's let's bevel some edges first. We'll just bevel this middle edge. We'll bevel these edges here. And then I will run a crease, edge loop complete. And we also wanna do that on this side over here. Oh, that went the wrong way. If you're having trouble with your edge loops going the incorrect direction, much like I just did there. I wanted the edge loop to wrap up and around this way. It did not do what I wanted it. Uh, there are some tricks to do that, but instead of dealing with all that, I'm gonna use that same mirror and weld function that I've been using, which is in your geometry menu under 
modified topology mirror and weld. If you look really close at that button, it's got some tiny little check marks here. I'm gonna check mark the Z option, and that Z option is going to mirror this side all the way over to there. So now we're starting to get a little bit more of a complex cutout shape. Very nice, very nice. A little bit more of a rounded edge there. Oh boy, aren't waffles. I, is it morning for anybody? Can anybody make some some terrible Shrek reference about making waffles in the morning? All right, let's see. For that hex pattern, that's gonna be the tough part. Individual square, you know, all we have to do is put a cube in there and sink it in. The tough part, ooh, you know what? Duplicate, sorry, real quick. Let's rotate this 90 degrees, of course. How could we forget? Make sure that's on negative as well. And then we're getting a little bit of an awkward um, shape down in there that we'll have to take care of. I think that'll be easy though. Uh, the square pattern, you know, by itself is easy, but out here on these edges is where it gets a little tough to deal with. So I have a little bit of a clever idea for how we can uh, get rid of those. Kitten, what's going on? Blinked and didn't see where the live boolean button is. Not a problem. Uh, if you have a piece of geometry, uh, you want, first you want to toggle on live boolean. It should be up here in the top left of your UI. And then from there, this icon is positive. So these will uh, do a positive boolean. That's just kind of the default. And these icons are negative. This is a difference mesh. So it will only display where those objects intersect. We want negative though. So we'll just keep that on negative. Facebook has lag. Well, at least Facebook is working now, I think. Yes, we are good. Cool, cool, cool. I will pull up the Facebook page just so I can make sure that if there are any comments or anything over there. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I guess the chat is working. Cool. All right. We are back up and running on Facebook. Awesome. Um, 48 seconds in and you're making me hungry. I'll be, I'll be fatter. Thank you. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of this stream. All right. So let's do that pattern. The first thing we want to do is insert a cube, insert or append. I like to use, like I said, I like to use the insert multi mesh brush and just click, draw out our cube. We got a cube. That's probably a bit too big but that's okay. Let's turn, uh, you know what? I'll wait to turn that on uh, for the negative. Let's figure out the sizing that we want here. So it looks like each segment has four, at least four whole squares, and then one, two, three, four on the outside that are a little bit cut off. So I will do one of these and If I want to move this perfectly, there are some little tricks that we can do, but the scale of that intersection is not perfect. So I think for our purposes today, we'll just eyeball this. Whoops, let's scale that. And at that scale, can we get away with four of these? And can they fit in here? Ooh, all right. I think that scale will work pretty well for what we want to do. Uh, so from here, let's mirror and weld again. But what we're going to do is turn on that Z button again. And now we're going to mirror across the X and Z at the same time. Amazing, I know. Uh, but first, I guess we should get the rest of these squares into place. I'll just control click and drag the rest of these out. Oh boy. And they're not perfect, but Who's counting? I'm not. If anything, you know, maybe we can scale these up a little bit more. I don't know. We'll just leave it. Leave it where we had it. Uh, and then we will mirror and weld across the X and Z. So we got all these cubes. Oh my, too many cubes probably. 
So we want this outer edge to start cutting off these shapes for our cubes. So what I'm going to do is first run a live Boolean operation on these cubes to make the shape work a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is grab our uh, base waffle shape that we had. I'm going to use the Z modeler brush and hover over the vert in the middle, select split, and just click and drag this out to, let's say, right about there. I think that looks pretty good. And then what I'm going to do, uh, actually here, you know what, I'll just duplicate this because I'm going to use this as a separate mesh anyway. Then what I'm going to do is extrude an edge loop, much like what I did before. Extrude another edge loop all the way out like this. And then I'm going to subdivide this a bunch of times, just so you guys can see what's going on here. I'm gonna turn this shape on negative, grab my cubes, and voila, now we have uh, a new shape that we're gonna to use to cut out uh, from, from the rest of uh, our waffle. Um, but yeah, let's see, let's, uh, I'll subdivide these cubes a couple times just so the geometry is a little bit more uh, consistent. And I would like to add some round, a little bit of roundness to these cubes. So what I've done is turned off the smooth subdivision modifier. I'm gonna divide them. Let's try a few times here and then smooth them. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Cool. So there we go. That's probably a little bit high for the res, but that's totally okay. So then what we're gonna do is run our first um, uh, live Boolean operation. So we're going under tool, uh, Boolean, make Boolean mesh. And this works really fast. Um, I'm always surprised by how quickly this works, even when I'm doing stuff with you know millions and millions of polygons. But how it works is it appends a new piece of geometry for you that uh, actually has all of those operations done for you. And then we got all these extra little floaters out here that we don't really want or need. So we can just delete those, go back to our other uh, tool here with all this junk in it. We don't really need those anymore. Those were just to make the uh, initial Boolean for that piece. We'll append that live Boolean piece that we made. Beautiful, let's set it to negative and let's slide it on down into our yummy, delicious waffle. Ba -ba -ra. I feel like we need some Zelda chest opening music or something like that. So that is how I would do something like that real quick. And this is still low poly, like we haven't even modified that yet. But we got a pretty quick, pretty simple texture. Uh, you can get rid of HDGO by duplicating the subtool that has it. There you go. Uh, the duplicated so subtool will no longer have the geometry on it. Very nice. Uh, also, if you have a bunch of subtools uh, that have HDGO on them, and you just want to copy all your subtools at once, if you click up in your tool copy, you can paste that, and that might delete that as well. I'm not too sure though, because it looks like at least duplicating the subtool does work. Looks like a pie. One pie, please. How did you duplicate without creating a new tool? I duplicated and created a new subtool, not a new tool, uh, which is just, you, know, you got a piece of geometry here, you just click on duplicate. And now you got two of them, two subtools. And then if you want, you can insert a piece of geometry on top of that and then uh, hide, whoops. hide part of your geometry, either one, and use the delete hidden operation under modify topo, delete hidden. Just like that. Uh, and then, you know, it's really easy for us to mirror this over to the other side, much like what we did with the mirror and weld functions, but this time we would use Y instead of Z or X. So maybe if we want to add some subdivs here to our waffle, maybe we could boolean all this out. Uh, I'm fine with that, or we can keep playing around here just in the um, the actual live boolean mode. 
let's put some little eyes, maybe some butter on this, maybe some, um, I was gonna say honey, I don't know why, syrup. <laughs> Let me delete this as well. Um, scale is no, scale is no. I'm not sure what you mean by scale is no. What are we talking about? Uh, I think I'm gonna insert just a simple cube for some butter. A beautiful little insert cube, our best friend. And much like what I did with the um, other piece of geometry, I will turn off the smooth modifier for the other cubes and just add in some quick subdivs. And I think what I would like to use is the, let's use the clay, where's the clay buildup? There we go. And I'm gonna use the clay buildup brush to just like chunk out some quick pieces of this butter. Just real quick. And we can be as sloppy as we want because we're gonna use the same trick that we used on our pizza cheese to smooth out some of our butter if we want. All right, you know what, we, we don't even need to do that. We can just kind of step up and down through our subdivs, use a very large smooth brush, and oh no, our butter. Our butter is getting live booleaned out. Uh, I don't think I mentioned, but the way live booleans work, uh, they work based on your subtool order. So I'm gonna hold shift and click this down arrow, this like weird bent down arrow, and that'll put it down on the bottom of the subtool list. But to update the scene, you just have to move your camera a little bit and then it will no longer be um, be receiving that, that Boolean operation there. All right, so let's get like a little, a little sassy turn on our butter and maybe like, whoa, trim out some of that. Uh, if you've ever experienced what just happened, actually, I should mention this really quick. Uh, if you're sculpting and your brushes are acting weird, they're being a lot stronger than what you normally experience, what is happening is, I, I don't know why this happens, but it does. Um, if you have geometry that is close to another piece of geometry, when you press down with your brush, it will sometimes occasionally sample the surface of the geometry that's close to it. In this case, some of these other pieces of geo. So either turn on solo mode or just hide some of the close by tools and you should be able to have your uh, brushes interact the way you would normally expect them to. Tetsuo, thanks for stopping by, man. You have a great rest of your night, or day, I guess. It's not here for me. With maple syrup, that's right. All right, we got our sloppy piece of butter. I don't really think we need to <laughs> spend too much time on our butter. Um, I think we maybe did a little too many subdivs there. That's fine. Uh, let's see. What I would like to do next, I think, is... Um, yeah, I'll just duplicate this. And let's see. Let's use... I'll just insert a quick creased cylinder. And I'm gonna start giving our little waffle friend some arms and legs. If you guys uh, use the transpose tool, or even if you don't, a little trick with it, if you have geometry that you would like to get synced back up with one of your X, Y, or Z um, axes, a little trick, another one of those little hidden tricks, right? You can snap to a flat, by just clicking on a piece of geometry. See, we can snap to that flat, that flat, or this flat, which is the important one. And then we can turn on rotate, hold shift. Start, so start rotating and hold shift. And you should, no matter what angle you're at, you can be at some like even really close angle. Uh, it will just snap back to that 90 degree. Uh, but it, or actually, we're not, we're not actually on it right now because you have to first snap you can see that it's a little bit off. You might not be able to tell, but if we look from the front, you can see that back edge. You have to snap first, 
and then rotate and do it. And now it'll be perfectly symmetrical or perfectly aligned with that axis. Same thing if we wanted to get that the other way or any other direction. We can even align it with, you know, a surface like this. Boop, right aligned with the flat of the uh, X symmetry plane there. But cool, that's enough about little secrets with the transpose line. Let's get on with making some derpy little arms and legs for this dude. I'm gonna have this guy just like laying on his back, getting coated, getting coated in maple syrup, which sounds like a disgusting, terrible event that you would have to shower for hours to get rid of, all that stickiness. Ugh. All right, this is a quick mirror and weld. All oh, these legs are not stubby enough. They need to be way more stubby, way more derpy. And then I think I'll just insert a very quick sphere and we can shape up a, a quick little quick little foot. Uh, we'll just do an insert sphere, it's fine. I know you guys came for the best stream tonight. We're making derpy food characters while also being educational and looking at some cool tools in ZBrush. Sure, that's, uh, I think that's fine. Beautiful. Beautiful, derpy, stubby little legs. And we will do the same thing for the arms. Uh, if you have something like this, a piece of geometry that you would like to rotate concentrically around an object, there's another little trick. I know I'm, I'm full of little tricks tonight. But you can snap to a vertice, again with that transpose line, and then, and then, you can rotate around that object. Oh, we'll turn our subdivs back on for that. Then you can rotate around that point perfectly, as long as you got your camera at the right angle. Uh, and then I'll just you know delete that. I don't need that extra one. I guess this is a little bit lower res than I thought, isn't it? I'll just do a quick Z remesh. Oh wow, that looks awful. I'll just add some quick subdivs to it then. And, you know, get them splayed out a little bit. And I guess, whoa, I guess gravity's a thing, huh? Oh, I know, people are gonna be checking to see if that's aligned with the ground plane properly or not. I always get a little, you know, you gotta be a little obsessive to be working on stylized characters. All right, we're gonna need some a really derpy face on this guy. I actually think what would be the, the most choice option would be to, uh, put like the tiniest little cute face on the little butter here. And then he's got like these tiny little derpy arms and legs out here. <laughs> I think that is the best, the best idea. Uh, for the, for this extremely detailed waffle hand, uh, I will be using a uh, extremely detailed sphere that I'll be like trimming on a little bit. See how that sampled in there really strong? That's because of what I was just talking about with the geometry being too close to that. So I can hide that, and then my trim brush will work the way I need it to. It's uh, pretty frustrating when something like that happens and you can't figure out why it's happening. Oh boy, look at this super detailed hand. Kinda looks like a spoon, but that's okay. Uh, we could also add some color to this, I guess. I guess that's an option. Let's grab our insert multi mesh primitive. And I think what I'm going to do is just use, whoops, insert sphere 
insert sphere. Actually, I will do that. And then I will use a curve tube snap brush. Oh no, that's not derpy enough. Also, these eyes are not nearly far apart enough. There's a little bit more, I think. Got to really push the, uh, the level of derp. It's very important, very important to me. Oh, it's perfect. That's adorable. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, and then like just a couple subdivs to smooth it out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff right there. Let's grab that butter, sample that color, grab our waffle, start with like this golden brown, and if we wanna do some quick poly painting on this, that's absolutely possible. Let's uh, let's grab that like whiter, off, off white, brownish tinted color there, and fill in just like a little bit of that. If you uh, use the fill object slider and uh, set your RGB intensity to something like 10, this will in um, this will apply about 10% of whatever color you have chosen. So this think of this like a per, uh, percentage slider when using fill object. So sure, that's that's fine. I say we uh, do some like quick little poly paint on something like this, just so it's uh, a little a little bit more waffle colored. There's, you know, there's variation here. There's some burnt edges and all sorts of other good stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is run our live boolean on everything that we need to be live booleaned, which should just be... Oop, we don't need that anymore. So I can delete that, I can delete that. And I'm just going to turn off poly paint for this real quick and click on Boolean make Boolean mesh. Mess up the legs. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> what should our uh, little waffle boy's name be? He needs, a, he needs a cute little name. Little Timmy the waffle. Nah, not Timmy. Timmy is a very, I feel like, I'm sorry to all the Timmys out there, but I feel like Timmy is a little bit of a derpy name. All right, let's append that Boolean piece. So we got that Boolean Geo in here. And we can delete if we, so at this stage, if you want, you know, you can, what I like to do is I like to save out a separate tool. Uh, if I do something with live Booleans, I like to save out the constructed pieces so that if there is a, a chance that I want to change something in the live Boolean or in the process earlier on, I can always roll back to that. I think, I think for now, I think our waffle's fine. I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna delete all those construction pieces. I don't even care, we don't need them. We got our waffle here, we are ready to go. All right, for our waffle, let's go ahead and do some quick poly paint. <laughs> Mess up his legs! You guys are gross. <laughs> uh, Waffy, Waffy's not bad. A little on the nose though. Let's grab our standard brush with RGB or MRGB selected. And let's just start sampling some colors and you know, going around here, doing some quick poly paint. Just something really quick. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. What's going on? I don't, I can't actually tell if that's the light hitting that over there or if it's just like an actual variation in it, in the, the color. It's not, it's not like it really matters <laughs> for something like this. Uh, I'm just gonna do a couple quick strokes here. I'm doing these pretty big and broad. This is actually how I poly paint faces for characters. It's the way I poly painted, um, where'd he go? The way I poly painted Android 17's face and any of his skin tone and anything like that. That's how I do most of my, my characters. RGB, low value, and sometimes some variation on alphas. For stylized characters, a lot of the time I like to um, keep it 
keep it real. Keep it pretty simple. Oh, that is obviously not... Oh, you know what? That's actually not too bad. Thought that was going to be way too saturated. That is super saturated. That's fine. Here. Let's get some quick, quick little crusty burnt areas. I feel like we're getting a little, going a little overboard for our quick little derp waffle boy here. Help me. Actually, more like, kill me. <laughs> uh, in terms of, you know, the hard edge and unorganic feeling of this, we can now go through at this stage, if we want, start using a few different brushes to start breaking up some of the surface. Actually, what we should do first is mirror and weld our waffle on the y-axis. And now we got that texture on the bottom. If for some reason your object is misaligned from the y-axis or any axis, and you go to mirror and weld, and it's like, whoa, that's not what I was expecting. A little trick that you can do is turn on local symmetry over here. And then when you mirror and weld, even though you're not on the correct axis, it'll still hook you up. Let's we'll still intelligently know where you want that. It'll put the uh, axis plane at the center of that object. But we don't need that because we're still here. So we'll just mirror and weld. Ooh. And you know, we can we can screw up our waffle as, who, who was that? Who said, <laughs> break his legs. <laughs> uh, I, there's a variety of brushes that we can, you know, sit here and you know, add some more texture, go crazy with our waffle. I don't know. Just rough it up real quick. Oh, there's a lot of geometry stretching going on there. That's no fun. Uh, 3D Pepe model next time. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, this looks like the little butter creature built a waffle robot and, <laughs> and controls it to take over the uh, the waffle kingdom. I like that. It's probably true. Thank you for coming up with the backstory for my uh, my new Sonic OC. Make a uh, missing bite like on the Apple logo. That's really easy to do with live booleans. I am afraid that I dynameshed this too high. We were working at about this resolution. At this scale, it should be totally fine. I'm not sure why that's taking so long. Uh, no syrup, we can do some syrup. We can do a little drippage of syrup. That should be pretty simple, pretty easy to do. I don't know why that took so long. One, one million polys, that was like the longest dynamesh of my life. Of my life. Uh, and then we can do like some quick smooth and soften some of some of those edges so they're not quite so hard and don't feel quite so unorganic. I uh, very quickly went over it with like a, uh, what was it, the clay buildup brush, um, just to add a little bit of unevenness to it. It was maybe a little heavy handed, but I think it's fine. I'm not gonna texture the bottom. We're never gonna see it. Plus, <laughs> it's not like this is going on my, and you know what? Yeah, you know what? This is going on my portfolio. This is going front and center. I think I'm actually gonna delete everything on my portfolio and just put this on there. Uh, so some syrup. I feel like if we drowned him in syrup, we're gonna have to turn that uh, smile upside down. But uh, just to do some syrup really quick, and I can actually show you a, a cool thing with a, a material as well. A little, little trick that I like to do. Let's see. And I'm sorry, we haven't broken the legs yet. We can maybe do that next, after our syrup. Um, we don't need to worry about poly paint right now. So I'm just gonna insert a sphere. And I'm going to use this sphere to start shaping up our little syrup drippage. And there are a number of ways to do this. You could use a sphere, you could use a curve brush if you were trying to get you know, some drippage or something like this, or you can do what I'm doing and maybe use them in combination and just like, see, look at that Dynamesh for us, it's so low. 
I don't know why that waffle took so long. Something like that. Maybe, you know, trim that up. Oh boy, some delicious, delicious syrup. Trying not to cover up his mouth. Do you guys think I'll get on the front page of ArtStation for this one? I feel like, I feel like it's, you know, well-deserved. <laughs> All right, uh, and then for the stream, the stream of syrup raining down, I'll just grab a snake hook or move brush, whichever, and just like pull up a little bit here. I guess this is a little fat too. God, I'm getting worried about, you know, accuracies for materials for this. Uh, and then what I'll do is probably, hmm, I guess we could just use a cylinder. That's probably the easiest way. Or even if we don't want to use a cylinder, we could just mask off a point and like pull it up, do some stretching. Problem is that's not as narrow as I want it to be. I think it'll be a little bit better if we use a cylinder. So let me do that. Uh, so if, if you insert an object, remember that trick I showed you guys with the transpose tool to get something back on the correct axis. Uh, if you want that back on the correct axis and it's a little, you know, skewed in multiple directions, you have to get it back on one axis first, like that, and then snap again to the surface, and then rotate while holding shift again, and then you can get it back to where it belongs. And I'll just stretch this up really far. Oh no. And scale this, oh my god. Scale that in. Not that thin. Try that again. Come on. There we go. Uh, it's probably even thinner than I wanted. That's okay. We'll make it work. And I'll just pull this up, and this will be pouring from an invisible fountain of whatever this stuff is called. I'll run a deformation, inflate on that, just to give it like one point of, whoa. Yeah, that's fine. One point of thickness there. Another Dynamesh. Beautiful, just a little bit too low res. That was even lower resolution for some reason. Okay, okay ZBrush, I'll play your game. I'll play along. I'll fix your wagon, all right. <laughs> Let me Z remesh that again just to kind of clean up how dirty that's looking. And then, you know, you can we can sit here and modify this all day, but I think, I think that's good for our little syrup pour. We'll frame in really close. You won't even see it, you'll never know. <laughs> uh, so for the material here, there are some tricks if you guys want to render in ZBrush to get some transparency. Uh, but instead of doing that, what I'm going to use is a MRGB button and a little material called the jelly bean material. The jelly bean, jelly bean, jelly bean material is pretty cool. I'm gonna select that, uh, just sample that, that color there, fill that in, and then I'm gonna go up into the material menu, and this is something I like to do for gemstones, uh, but it'll also work, I think, pretty well for this. Go into modifiers and just crank up that ambient. Let's say, I, you know what, that actually looks pretty good. Maybe like 50 or so. Uh, but the material here seems to be screwed up, so let's reapply that. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We got some nice, yummy looking syrup. Delicioso. And then we can, we can break this guy's limbs. No, I think, I think we'll just leave that how it is. If anything, we can delete his derpy limbs, but I think his derpy little limbs are endearing. At least, you know what? Let's just do, just do legs. Just do sad, sad little legs on our waffle robot. Beautiful, beautiful. I honestly, you know, 
I think, I think this might top Derpy Pizza. We spent, gosh, who knows how many days on this Derpy Pizza, but Derpy Waffle, I feel like, you know, we barely put any time into this at all, and it's already a masterpiece. It's perfect. Ready to hit that front front page art station again. Top row zebra central. This is it, guys. This is this is peak peak zebra digital sculpting. Uh, all right, let me make sure I didn't miss anything here in chat. Uh, stop the butter villain with syrup guns. Oh my gosh, you can hard surface model some syrup guns. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we are what we repeatedly do. So now I'm the Waffle Man. That's right. Would it bleed butter or syrup? Mm, that's a tough question. These are the things that are going to keep you up at night. What's going on, Ghost of Christmas Future? How you doing, man? Um, let's see. Spider. A spider. Uh, looks outstanding. Right, right, I know. Yes, maximum derp achieved. All right, how are we doing on time? Let's make sure we're doing all right. I got about a half hour left before we got to bounce. I, I feel like we can cheat a little bit. I don't think there's anybody else on after me. Double check on that. Uh, there is not, so we have a little extra time that we can play around. Uh, so next, let's do a derpy, I don't know, burger? Uh, is there anything specific in terms of tools that anybody wants to see? Because then I can try to work that in to our workflow. And I'm gonna refresh this just to fix. It's getting a little, a little deep there. So there's some sub tools. Oh my God, that's hard to look at. Make a polymesh 3D. And then we need to import our image for our burger. Our little burger bud. This guy's double stacked. This guy already has a face. This is what gave me the idea originally to make all the, the derpy little food creations. Like, aw, oh, heck yeah. This is, this is my jam. Play some Doom. <laughs> Uh, I feel like Doom is pretty much on everything, so I'm surprised there's no like secret hotkey in ZBrush that like starts playing Doom. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into it, Derpy Burger style. How we want to do some buns? Probably just use a sphere. Probably the easiest way. Uh, I'll probably just use the clip on the transpose brush there. It does smoosh all that geometry up in there. So uh, you can also, you know, cut that. You can also delete it. There are a lot of ways that you can get rid of that and clip that up. Uh, in terms of the shape, though, hmm, this uh, this sphere is a little bit too high resolution for my liking. So I think uh, what we will do instead, uh, let's let's be here. Let's use the Z Modeler brush. We've been using this a little bit. What I'm going to do is delete everything down below there. So I just selected it uh, and hit it with my selection lasso brush. Delete hidden, we'll also turn on double so we can see that's down in your display properties. And then I'll use my delete edge loop function in the Z modeler brush to just delete a few edge loops. I'm deleting uh, about two thirds of them right now. This should make it a little bit easier to create the shape that we're looking for without worrying about having so much topology. I'm not going to worry about the top up there. That's fine. So now when we smooth that, that should still retain its shape pretty well. Oh, what's that? Oh no. Well, there you go. All fixed. <laughs> uh, so let's do some squishing. Ooh, you know what? That needs to be a little bit fatter up here. So let's grab this ring. Oh, that's such a bad, such a bad mask. We'll use the mask pen instead, since it's a square selection. And then I'll just scale concentrically there from the midpoint. And maybe like, 
pull up a little bit. There we go. That looks a little bit closer to the shape we want. And we can close holes. There's a number of operations that we can do here, I think. And yeah, we're probably fine with the close holes. It does get a little bit messy, which is my main concern with doing something like that. Let's hold on to this for a little bit, just like this. And let's squash that top piece, top part of the bun a little bit. Give it a little bit more flat on top. So we got our bread done. All we have to do is duplicate this and throw it on the bottom, which is very easy to do. The derpy legs should be easy enough, I think. Uh, what kind of condiments we want? Definitely some meat, definitely some cheese. I like tomato, I like lettuce. What do you guys like on your burgers? Whoops. Let me grab my stream music here. Let me fix this real quick. Salad, so some lettuce, some pickles. This is brave. Some pickles. All right, we can do some pickles as well. Let's see here. Bacon? Ooh. Now you're now you're talking my language. That's that is the correct answer to uh, to everything. Bacon. I'm trying to think. Nah, I can't think of the comedian. It's like talking about how you can add bacon to anything and it instantly makes it better. Put bacon on some lettuce, and then it's an entree, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's the way my brain works. I remember like half of a thing. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting fact. I'm like, file that away. And then over time, lose half of it. <laughs> Have half of a reference and hope that somebody knows what I'm talking about. Jalapenos on a burger? That's actually a pretty good idea. There's this restaurant, uh, this really nice burger place in Cincinnati. And they have this burger called a Cincinnati Sunrise. And it's got egg on it. It's got some getta. If you guys have ever had getta, oh man, one of my favorite burgers. So good. <laughs> Bacon arms. Bacon arms. That's not a bad idea. I feel like him not having arms is actually, you know, it, it increases the derp. Whoop, I'm sorry, I smashed my desk there. Uh, not having arms, I feel like, increases the uh, the derpiness a little bit. So I think we'll we'll stick without the arms for now. But thank you, thank you for the suggestion for bacon arms. Uh, actually, here I'm going to just repurpose one of these buns uh, to make the meat here. So we'll do that local symmetry trick again and mirror and weld on the Y. Oh, that was not what I wanted. Where's my ground plane? Or where is our zero point? There we go. Oh, local sim is still on. That's why it's freaking out. Closer, a little bit more. There we go. Just a very cheap way to use some new options to create something that we could have done, you know, a million different ways. It's pretty much what ZBrush and digital art's all about. A million ways to do everything and then you trying to figure out, you know, what works best for you. Alex is now hungry. Welcome, welcome to the club. What was it that set you off? Was it the derpy pizza? The adorable waffle butter mech? 
derpy pizza. Oh, turn on everything else. He was just a normal pizza. Oh, you know what? We can make those eyes like black olives or something. Now that I look at this from a distance. And then I was like, oh yeah, derpy pizza. Top, top creations. Or butter boy here. He looks delicious. Waffles sound so good. I have, I have not had waffles in a minute. Uh, our meat. Our meat's a little too thick, so we'll probably have to skew this. I feel like this is just very, <laughs> very high quality streaming content. And I just want to say, I just want to say you're welcome, guys. <laughs> you're welcome for this, this high quality derp, uh, derp masterpiece. Watching the, uh, the next Picasso at work. Uh, let's just do a quick mask. I'm just gonna squash this on the top and bottom a little bit. Hey, now we got more of a patty shape. That's a little bit messy, but that's okay. We'll make it work. We're not here for you know, making extremely clean shapes. We're just trying to make quick shapes. Let's slide that bun up. We're gonna need some more room for ingredients. And maybe like clip the bottom of that so that it's a little flat on the bottom. Flat butt, maybe even more. All right, gang, what do we got? <laughs> Folygon's Theory of Bacon, coming soon to a bookstore near you. I like it. Fried egg on a burger is top tier for sure. Absolutely agreed. Those buns are art. Yes, these uh, um, half spheres that I squashed a little bit. <laughs> Put a T-bone steak in it. Not a bad idea, Bray. Oh man, <laughs> that'd be hard to eat. You're just chomping away on that. First of all, T-bone steak is not incredibly tender, but also doesn't T-bone steak have uh, a giant bone in it? <laughs> Beetroot? Oh no, isn't that like an Australian thing? I'm not a huge fan. Sounds kind of gross. I'll have to pass on the the b beet. B -b 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 beet. All right, we got one meat patty. The question is, do we double stack or not? I feel like we double stack, right? I mean, we don't have to copy this burger. You know what we're going. We're going off art. We make our own destiny here. <laughs> All right. We will double stack. I feel like it's necessary. More meat, the better, right? Let's hide our uh, top bun, and now we can start importing more and more ingredients. I should make an insert multi mesh brush that's just burger parts. I feel, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that would be pretty great. Uh, all right, let's do cheese next. So for our cheese, what are we gonna use? I think we're just gonna use a cube. It sounds like the easiest, the easy method. Just squish our cube down. Wow. Artist at work here. This stream became a little self-degrading pretty quick. <laughs> um, here, I will do the same trick that I did before by dividing without the smooth mod on a few times and then dividing with it. And just like that, we can start maybe melting some of our cheese. Using the snake hook or rotate, whatever you wanna use. The one thing I don't like about the snake hook is that it's pretty hard to get something to curve the way I want it. I often get this kind of swoop-like effect. So typically, I try to avoid the snake hook a lot of the time and just use like standard masking and rotation tools to get the shape a little bit closer to what I want. I feel like I get better results that way. And it's not incredibly hard. 
And it works on like almost everything because you can make any shape you want with your mask as long as your geometry can support it. Well, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting a little too uh, too educational here. We gotta get back to the, uh, the derpy cheese. I forgot, forgot myself, I'm sorry. All right. As much as you find my work great, you're not entirely comfortable complimenting my buns. You know, I'm not entirely comfortable talking about my buns on stream either, but you know what? We're here, we're displaying them already. We might as well. We might as well talk about Folly Buns, which is my new username. I am changing all my accounts to Folly Buns. I think it's only appropriate. All right, we got some these. We did it. If we want to melt some more or move it around, create some more organic shapes, we can. I say we just leave it and move on to some more ingredients. What's next, guys? We got the cheese, maybe a thick slice of tomato next. Tomato would be very easy as well. Let's actually very quickly uh, use this as a color sampler so that we can at least get a base for our colors. Just so we got something here. Give me that cheese color. It's kind of a kind of a fun yellow. All right. Beautiful. Let's get a tomato in there. Onions. We could do some onions, guys. By the time I'm done, this burger is going to be stacked with every ingredient known to man. Maybe we should put the, uh, the ingredient additions on hold. Also, I like that I'm gonna put them in the order that they appear in the sandwich. Also need some sesame seeds on this guy. We got, because we got a lot of work that we need to do. Let's get to it. All right, tomato, or brown tomato, I guess. Or right here, sample that red real quick. All right, I'm gonna do these quick. Next up, what do we got? Onions, is that what I heard? Do I hear onions? Onions going once, onions going twice. Onions it is. I'm out of colors that I can sample. We'll make it up as we go. What color is an onion? It's like an off-whitey, whoops. A little purple, right? I guess it depends on the onion. Like onion skin, a little bit purple, but I think just raw or raw or cooked onions are just white. Let's just do like an off-white with a slight amount of uh, a little bit of purple in there. No, you have way too much purple. We'll do that. And then for the onion, of course, onion is not, we don't just want a ring of onion. Jesus, no, it sounds terrible. <laughs> so we will hollow out our onion. Z modeler brush plus split avert plus Q mesh, a polygon. Amazing. Just like that. We got a quick little onion thing and then we can, I don't know, maybe offset it with the tomato or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we can do a bunch of onion, little onion rings. Ketchup, mustard, of course, of course. We will get those, those will go on top. Uh, derpy animal style in and out burger. I like it, you definitely should. Uh, how did I sample color from the reference image? No problem. Um, so as long as you have something imported in Spotlight like I do right now, the C key will sample anything in the ZBrush UI, anything in the software at all. I can sample the uh, uh, dark, dark purplish blue up here. I can sample the red, but I can't sample this image unless I press the Z key to activate my spotlight first, which is just the hot key for it. And then I can press the C key and sample all sorts of yummy, delicious colors up here. 
All right. Lettuce. Lettuce. We do got some lettuce up here, so that should be really quick and easy. You know, because we have a reference, so we can figure it out very quick. Uh, for the lettuce, I will just do... Um, or you know what? I'll just duplicate the cheese. Don't tell anybody, but not everybody knows this. Lettuce is actually... Oh, my pen froze. Lettuce is just actually cheese. It's just recolored cheese. It's a huge government conspiracy. Not everybody knows. All the, the flat earthers know. They're aware. They're aware of the truth. All right. We'll get our lettuce. And then we'll just like crinkle, crinkle, crinkle in here. Some very quick little rivulets, rivets, something, something like that. Eat your greens, absolutely. Guys, if you're not eating your greens, what are you doing? Come on. If you guys wanna get big and strong like me, <laughs> eat your greens. And your beef, <laughs> yes. And your buns, eat your buns, guys. <laughs> no problem, uh, Arochima, my pleasure. All right. What else? What else? Come on. My lettuce is pretty much done. Look at this beautiful green lettuce. We need more toppings. <laughs> round earth. Round earthers be gone. <laughs> you got that, didn't you? Uh, it's just green pep. No, this is obviously lettuce as a um, true Cheese lettuces, no. It's just recolored cheese with all the flavor sapped out. Pickles, all right. I see two pickles, we got pickles. All right, pickle, 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 we can do that. For the pickle, I will cheat yet again and duplicate my tomato because everybody knows that pickles are just actually tomatoes that are more narrow and recolored. This is just fact. Oh, you know what? I feel like we can't put the pickles right on top of the lettuce. Got too much green in one space. We're gonna have to space some stuff out. So I think what we'll do is bring in that second meat patty, stack this on top, and then continue with more ingredients. Let's see, for our pickle color, let's go a little Darker green. Oh, that looks a little sickly. <laughs> Something like that, sure. And I don't really want to subdivide this a bunch of times just so I can poly paint it. So I'll just, you know, lay this on here real quick. Now, you could Real burger connoisseurs know that you never put your pickles parallel. You always gotta put your pickles in an X. So that when you get to that middle bite, you get that big juicy pickle explosion of flavor. This is just, this is fact, guys. That's kind of a sickly green, isn't it? I think we should change our, our pickle color. You know what? Actually, let's, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep our sickly green pickle color. <laughs> what do pickles look like, guys? What color are pickles? Let's go... I, I don't want to do a bunch of subdivs so I can get the uh, inner and outer color. Let's just go for a lighter green, I think, instead of doing that. Because we don't have enough subdivs to polypaint these. Plus, we need some more 
ingredients. Another meat, yep. Do we need another meat patty? That was the real question. Oh, the bacon, of course. Of course, I feel like bacon on top of the pickle might be the wrong order. So maybe meat, bacon, then the pickle. We'll slide that in there. All right. How are we gonna do the bacon though? This is where, this is where we're getting into tough territory, guys. The shape of bacon. We gotta really represent bacon well. It's, you know, the main, the main food group. How we doing on time? <laughs> All right, we got we got enough time to finish out our delicious burger here for sure. All right, I'll just stretch out our bacon slice. And to cheat with some quick edge loops, I'll just use my slice curve brush. And you know what? I'm gonna cheat as much as I can. Oh, what? I totally thought that would work. All right, let's draw a few slices here. And then what I'm going to do is just mask off every other edge loop. And slide them like that. Get some sizzling bakeronies here. Amazing. I know guys, you've never seen this kind of quality before. You didn't even know it was possible. How many slices of bacon do we want though? That's the real question. I feel like most of the time you see two, but this is our burger. So let's do like, I don't know, let's go crazy. Like, I'm thinking three. All right, let's do a, yeah, sure, that works. First, first go, first tries of the charm. Oh, this bacon is just, looking perfect. Could not imagine this bacon looking any better. All right, and we'll do a, uh, our quick, what did we have, some quick pickles on here. Is that it, guys? Is that where the bun places? Is that, is that the, the crown? The pickles? Is that where we end it? No, we need more. What did I see? You can stick with a, a, a toothpick with a flag in top. That will, you know, I, I always appreciate that in my sandwiches. Helps keep everything together. Ketchup. All right, so some ketchup and some mustard. All right, that should be easy enough. Let's use a curve tube snap brush. And I'm just going to draw a quick little zigzag here and ZBrush is gonna yell at me because I have subdivision levels. And I'm gonna grab some quick red. Ooh, whoa, whoa. I did not mean to do that. But you know what? This is, you know, a happy accident. So we will hold on to this drippy ketchup that has exploded down the side of our burger. Our burger's getting a little messy, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is inflate my ketchup a little bit. And then dynamesh it all together. And try to make that a little bit lower res so that I can actually smooth out that little drip there, make that a little bit more fun. I don't even know what that is, weird shape, but I like it. Amazing, some beautiful quick ketchup. Our pickles are shoving through our ketchup, which just looks fantastic. All right, and uh, what was it, some mustard? We'll do the same thing. 
curved tube snap brush. A th 1000 Island sauce. Isn't that what's in like the Big Mac re uh, sauce recipe or something? Oh, look, look, we got another drippage. Another happy accident mustard drippage. Perfect. This is a lot of mustard, guys. I don't know what you were thinking. I'll try to uh, smooth this really strong. Not get that number to go lower. There we go. Ten out of ten. Wood burger again. And a cherry on top. And whipped cream. And pudding. <laughs> I think, uh,. I think we need to keep our burger in the realm of tasty. Look, we're trying to make derpy burger McGee here, but at the same time, look, you're just getting a little out of control, guys. Uh, finally able to catch one of your streams live. Been catching up on the Android 17 sculpt on YouTube. Well, boy did you come on the right day. We are doing some extremely, extremely difficult sculpting. Uh, if you haven't seen yet, uh, spent about, I don't know, a couple months working on this one. Probably a top portfolio piece. Can't wait to upload it to ArtStation, get on the front page. Uh, we also did a waffle. Where'd he go? There he is. Showing off some demonstrations with live booleans while making a cute little butter boy in the middle, getting some uh, getting some syrup poured on him. And now we're doing a burger, and we just need a derpy little face. But thank you, I appreciate the, uh, the kind words. Um, Android 17 was a lot of fun to work on. I really enjoyed that character. Uh, I just came back from the last time, had pizza, and now I got burger. That's right. That's right, we're moving up in the world, guys. All right, very quickly, let's give our burger some adorable little eyes, or I guess I can just swap my color, can't I? Closer together or farther apart? I, feel, I always feel like further apart, whoa, whoops. Further apart eyes always feel more derpy to me. I don't know about you guys. And now the real, the real question. Where does the mouth go? Or is all of this his mouth, this sloppy mess? I feel like that would just be cruel. We'll just do a quick derpy little stupid mouth here with a curved tube line. Amazing masterpiece. What did you guys say? A flag on top or something like that? Where's the pineapple for the pizza? All right, Wyvern Jack, you're uh, you're actually onto something here because pineapple on pizza. I will side with the pineapple folks. Pineapple on pizza is amazing. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Just saying hi before bed. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, man. You have a good, good night's sleep. Enjoy it. Oh, that, that got too big. Smaller and derpier, the better, I think. Right? Uh, could have uh, made this stuff into, like, teeth and done something like that. I feel like I've done something like that in the past. Might have an image somewhere of something similar. All right, how are we gonna do a little flaggy? Oh, you know what? What about sesame seeds? Hmm. How 
How does one sesame seed? Probably with little capsules. For a quick sesame seed trick. Let's try 20. Sure. Whoops. If you wanna add a few quick sesame seeds. I'm just using the insert multi-mesh brush and chose the capsule. You could also do this with like a ray mesh or something like that, but this is such a dense piece of geometry that that's not really worth remeshing just to go through the trouble of doing that. When I can very quickly do this. And what's more random than me just kind of clicking around and barely thinking about it? Probably a lot. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to delete that. I wanted to split that. Sure. Sure, looks beautiful. Looks about as beautiful as everything else. And of course, our Perfect little flag on top. Continue the trend of using some insert mesh brushes. <laughs> Feed the monster. <laughs> I will not be satisfied until the derp has exceeded my my own derpiness. like normally toothpicks, right? Something like that. Let's use a Q cube. Nano mesh for the uh, seeds. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Or array mesh, technically. But um, I didn't want to take the time to remesh it just so I could do that. It's not really worth it. What color is our flag, guys? The color of love. Love for our burger. Our fellow burger men and women across the globe. Sure. Beautiful. Could it be any more beautiful? I think not. I think not. Uh, starting to learn ZBrush lately should really... Uh... Uh, learn how to use the transpose line. Yeah, I like the transpose line. Uh, transpose line a lot, just because it's got like a lot of extra little quick functions in there that you can play around with, that are very helpful for speeding up your workflow. There's nothing wrong with the 3D gizmo, especially if you're used to other 3D applications. The 3D gizmo is great. All right, this guy. Now I need the derpy little legs down here to complete our ensemble. We didn't exactly, you know, we broke style. We broke style quite a bit, actually, but that's okay. We are derpy in our own right, especially once we get our legs on here. <laughs> a 
Does the burger have eyes and a mouth? It's got something. All right, let's rotate this cylinder. Sure. Grow that out. And let's we'll merge this into the bun. We don't want that in the middle. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, we want a quick save. Don't forget to save often, kids. Don't want to lose all that really hard progress that we, we've sculpted tonight. Create some quick little derpy feats here. Much like what we did with our waffle boy. And we will move on. Oops. A little high on the dynamesh res. I could even flatten those. That was terrible. Um, You know what? I mean, we've come this far with our burger friend, right? We might as well get some asymmetry. He's having a good old time, kicking out one leg, just sitting, enjoying himself. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> I'm very glad that I decided to do this. What's next, popcorn? No. No, no popcorn. I don't think so. Uh, we are actually uh, a little bit over time here, uh, the time that I am allotted for streaming here on the channel. It's okay if I go a little bit over, but I think uh, I think our burger friend here, I think that'll be, I think that'll be a good place for us to cut off the stream. I'll just, you know, fix, because I care about this. I've, I've grown attached to Burger Boy here which is now his official title, Burger Boy. Um, he's very, very good. Very good Burger Boy. I'm very happy with this. I can't wait to post this on my portfolio. Um, <laughs> I want to say thanks for coming and hanging out, guys. I hope even though we did some quick, derpy little sculpts, I hope that maybe some of you were able to follow along or at least learn something new in terms of tools. Maybe some of the stuff we covered with live boolean or some of the stuff with some insert multi-mesh brushes and just kind of shaping up some geometry quick and getting to see some of that. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. Uh, again, I am Folygon. There's a link up here to my website, folygon.com. I stream on my own Twitch channel. There's links to all my stuff over there. Uh, really the only thing I'll, I'll shout out other than that is my, I don't even know where it is, my Gumroad. Gumroad.com slash Folygon. I will share it here in chat for y'all. I'd appreciate it if you checked it out. I don't pay anything to advertise or anything like that, so it's all just word of mouth from you beautiful people and the occasional link share, which I always appreciate. On here, I got some base meshes. Base meshes? Let's try that word again. Base meshes, brushes, materials, all sorts of good goodies on here, as well as uh, a few different courses. Uh, the course up here in the top right, How to ZBrush, it's my absolute beginner's guide, get you up and running in ZBrush in just a couple hours. Um, the middle one here is a little bit more of an intermediate tutorial, and this one on the left is a little bit more intermediate to advanced. So I'd appreciate, again, if you guys check those out. And other than that, definitely click follow here on the Pixelogic channel if you haven't already. And I will either see you on my own channel. Uh, I stream, like I said, um, what is it now? Tuesday through Friday at noon EST, noon Eastern US time. And then on this Friday, we're actually doing a, or I'm actually doing a uh, live critique session. So if you guys wanna check that out, there is some information on my Twitch channel for how you guys can get some stuff critiqued on uh, on the live stream. So definitely check that out. Uh, Bra Brave, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You have a great night, man. Um, 
Next up, do some derpy poo team. Maybe, maybe in the next one. Canada checking in here. Thanks for the stream. No problem, OT. And Harpy as well. You guys all have a good night. Arochima. Thanks, everybody. I will see you all in the next stream. Until then, you guys, you guys be good to each other. All right. See y'all.